It is April 17, 2024. I think this is going to be a short one tonight. Um, if you guys still want to chat with one another, maybe I can play a video. Um, hello, Linty, Alicia, Shauna Howard. Hello. Andrew Cruz, James Brandmerg, L24. Thank you so much. Brenda Rose. Donna Davidson, D. Mark Hay, Linty London, Steph, Mist Hay, the root of all evil. Yeah. Yeah. Matt, hello. Tell a noose. Nice to see you. Patricia White, Tanya D. Matt, again. <laughs> I'm really out of it tonight. I'm sorry. Karen Carpenter, Oracle 11, The Hypocrite's Matrix, Agnes, Super Painting 62, Steph, did I say hello? Crystal Ingram, hello. Pooch Palace, Rage Against the Machine, I think I said hello. Barb in Ohio, hi. Sheepdog, Patriot, hello, hello. Justin Wynn, Let me just go to radar. Okay. So we did have more tornadoes last night or early today. I, yeah, weather warfare. And, and I post, even if it's not the kind of destruction that an awful lot of people um, think is not enough, right? No. One home getting hit, that's enough for me. That's enough for me. Jane Northrup, yo. Um, I am. Um, here we go. So, you see the frequencies? You see all of the supercells igniting? in Mexico, then bringing them into Texas. Supercells igniting here, Alabama and Georgia, and you got the supercells with a whole lot of frequencies that are very visible to anybody uh, that cares about this kind of destruction. The, the frequencies, the extremely low frequencies, the microwaves, the scalar frequencies, all used to bring about an awful lot of destruction. So now, I'm not sure what's going on in Ohio, southern Ohio, but it does not look good. It does not look good here in uh, the northern part of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Destruction is the era that we're living in, right? Destroy structures, destroy infrastructure, destroy people, destroy, destroy, destroy. And it's, I don't know about you, but it sure does upset me. And sometimes it's just hard to take it all in. Midwest hit with multiple tornadoes during severe storms. System, we want to bring in Fox Weather correspondent Nicole Valdez to talk about yesterday's storm and help us sum up what we saw. The video coming in, impressive, of course. We knew this was going on. We brought it to you. But now you see all of the images that are coming in today. Yeah, Craig Britta, it was anticipated that yesterday was really going to be uh, more of that tornado threat, right? As we take a look at zooming in, states like Ohio, or excuse me, Iowa, um, Missouri and Illinois were sort of in the really bullseye for that potential threat and the videos we're getting from that area. I mean, take a look at this one from Palmer, Iowa. The person who captured this, a train spotter, saying this was a career day getting to witness this level of funnel uh, so closely and watch all that dirt spin up. I mean, an incredible view here of what some of these twisters look like on the inside here. This was a north central...
Does that look like a tornado to you? Or maybe a creation of man? Oh, Iowa, just Tuesday afternoon. This was an area that was under that tornado watch, but you can see here just how clearly you're able to make out sort of the center of that rotation. Uh, this is another actually terrifying image from one of our own storm chasers, Brandon Coppock, as he was going through that tornado worn zone and watch that. Look at that grain silo destroyed, then lifted in the air, just missing that Storm Chaser's car by a few couple feet. So you see him here trying to turn around, get out of the area, letting people know what was going on in that moment. A terrifying situation, of course, when I doubt he wanted to be as close as he ended up being, uh, but thankfully he's okay. It was just an incredible image here that you see sort of play out. Now, these were just some of the many tornadoes that impacted the state of Iowa. We saw others like this one in Rockwell City. You can see here slowly moving through what looks to be like a populated area nearby some businesses there uh, just beyond those buildings. Uh, so uh, another very scary situation for those who live near this area. And an additional one here in Henry County. You'll notice here the farmlands, but what looked like some homes back in the distance where that rotation is happening uh, and a fierce looking tornado at that. Again, these are just a few from the several reported yesterday uh, just in Iowa alone. But if we take a look further south into states like Missouri, we know there was some pretty significant damage there uh, that is still being dealt with in Smithville, Missouri here. Uh, this is what the cleanup now looks like for those who live in that area. And we know at least one business over in Kansas City now reporting they're going to be closed for the next several weeks. Let's take a look here, what they call catastrophic damage after uh, another possible tornado there. We're still waiting on details to find out just how... Severe storms ripped across the plains with at least 22 yeah, reported right. tornadoes across four states, Kansas, Iowa, Nebraska, and Missouri. Residents capturing these terrifying images as menacing funnel clouds approached. The suspected tornadoes leaving a trail of damage in their wake. Scary moments for drivers in Iowa who filmed the That's moment a possible twister crossed a highway. That's a big old tornado. Near Smithville, Missouri, several roofs were torn off off buildings and this camper flipped over debris now scattered throughout the town at least two people have been injured in the storms the area was also hit by strong thunderstorms with golf ball sized hail and wind gusts of up to 60 miles an hour tonight the region bracing for more severe weather with millions still under tornado watches Priya Shreether NBC News They came down from Cedar Rapids to help pick up the debris. Pieces of the house and structures outside have been blown clear across the field next to his home. This messed up quite a bit of ours. This is the first time, you know, you always feel sorry for it happened to people. You see it on the news all the time and then, then it happens to you, it really hits you. Homes had been almost completely leveled. Every got a little bit worse. So yes, their brand new home has a lot of damage. Their shop is gone and as you see, to the north, the house is all, this is all but gone. You can uh, replace material stuff, okay. bodies you can. We were hoping to intercept some storms as they moved into the area. The initial lines of thunderstorms during this severe weather outbreak moving at an incredible pace, sometimes up to 80 miles per hour obviously making it hard to keep up with the storm. So we let them come to us. We tried to stay ahead of them as long as we could, and it was not for very long. Obviously, a lot of heavy rain with these storms. There are high precipitation storms producing a lot of heavy rain, making travel very difficult. Uh, ponding on area roadways was certainly a problem as the heaviest rains fell, along with some small to moderately sized hail impacting travel across the area. The threat for yet another round of severe weather continues today. We're focused on two areas and nearly 25 million people who live there. The first is in northeastern Kansas and western. I'll post the link to this. It's 25 minutes. It's, uh, <laughs> oh, it's climate change. The Dubai flooding that has been just horrific. Storms bring suspected tornadoes to at least four states. Yay. This is a woman who knows 
about weather modification. She knows. So. CBS's Roxana Saberi is following the storms and she's going to start us off tonight. The majority of Eastern Iowa now under this tornado watch. Tonight under threat, millions of people across the Midwest bracing for a dangerous trail of tornadoes. A twister ripping through Rockwell City, Iowa, siren sounding. Iowa State Trooper Paul Gardner was on duty when he spotted this tornado. It was zigzagging all over the farmland. And a deputy's dash cam in Sioux City captured this lightning strike. 100 miles west of Omaha in Creston, Nebraska, a funnel over farmland sweeping over the plain. We got one that touched down. And in Kansas, the National Weather Service says a twister with winds of up to 100 miles per hour tossed a man from his trailer, leaving his wife and their two dogs stuck in the rubble. They all survived with minor injuries. Meanwhile, in Missouri, thousands are in the dark after severe storms struck this afternoon, a tornado ripping off roofs and flipping this camper. And hail the size of half dollars pelted the pavement. Cat rescued by police in Dubai. I can't even begin to think of how many animals are killed in this weather warfare. But their water looks much cleaner than our water. Okay, that's good. Wow. Okay, redacted. Um, actually posted on the Dubai floods. They mentioned chemtrails, weather modification. Remember when they called us conspiracy theorists for talking about how governments and NGOs carrying out cloud seeding programs or how people have seen an unbelievable explosion of chemtrails and then we're just conspiracy theorists. Well, we were all proven correct once again. The city of Dubai in the United Arab Emirates is flooding more than six inches of rain falling in a matter of hours and according to bloomberg this is thanks to their cloud seeding program so this look at this this is unbelievable they are not used to this what six inches in just a few short hours they're used to three inches per year so in one 24-hour period actually i think it was 48 uh, they got two years worth of rain and right, look at that mall we were just there yeah. Isn't that crazy? Look and, at that. you know, they don't have the infrastructure for drainage. So that's why their highways are stuck. They're flooding all over the place. It's wild there. Yeah. yeah and, I mean, uh, I, lived, I lived in Arizona uh, when I was like 20, and it, we had a, a, a rainstorm one day, and it's like one night, and because it's not built for it, it just flooded everything. It was crazy. I couldn't imagine getting that much rain. Like, that's, that's insane. And the cloud seeding program that they've got, so this is legit. This is not a conspiracy theory. Like, oh, no, there's no, they're not seeding clouds. There's nothing about chemtrails. Now, there are two different things, cloud, uh, seed, uh, seeding clouds and chemtrails, two different things. One is purportedly supposed to be good, right, the idea that we're going to have rain. The other one is supposed to be bad. It's supposed to stop rain. It's like supposed to stop it, right? That, that's chemtrails uh, and cause all sorts of sickness for people and really, really awful. But here is just an insight into UAE's cloud seeding program. Yes, this is real. Just so I know, I have to drive back from Abu Dhabi to Dubai. Uh, no. It's not raining. It's a sunny day. The UAE government invested more than $20 million in research to start a process called cloud seeding. The UAE performs around a thousand hours of cloud seeding a year, and it's all controlled by this building in the National Center of Meteorology in Abu Dhabi, where they track the whole process. We met with a cloud seeding expert to explain how the seeding process works. We wait the forecast when we have a good you know, chance for, uh, for cloud. We send the aircraft to that location. It go under the cloud in the first stage of the cloud. There is good updraft at that time. Start to release all the salt and with the good updraft, of course, it will go inside the cloud. Uh, the droplets will become bigger and start to uh, rain. The center manufactures a salt substance that helps enhance rainfall. They put them in what they call flares. Yeah. 
So that's what you can blame that. And so there, I saw some conspir- I saw some people online like, "Come on, you right wing nut jobs out there! This is not cloud seeding. This is clearly climate change." And then the UAE fires back and actually says, "No, yeah, we were cloud seeding. In fact." We confirmed at the Gulf States National Center of Meteorology dispatched seating planes um, from Al Ain Airport Monday and Tuesday to take advantage of the cloud formations. The seating planes have flown seven missions over the past two days. So, yes, this was directly responsible for all of this. Of course, this isn't the first time, by the way, and it won't be the last back in 2016. One day before the worst floods in Tasmania's in 40 year history uh, in Tasmania and Australia, a cloud seeding plane was launched and brought devastating rain. Look. Residents in southern Tasmania are demanding to know why cloud seeding was conducted over the Derwent River catchment the day before the worst floods in 40 years. Cloud seeding is a technique used to increase rain. Hydro Tasmania has confirmed it flew a cloud seeding flight despite the weather warnings. Farmers believe the technique could have made the flooding worse. The Premier says a formal... Yeah, they did make it worse. So, I mean... Maybe we should think about that before we do it again. And in fact, there was a man we were watching recently on Tucker Carlson who was talking about all these great innovators in California and said, a lot of these guys, they just want to start a cloud seeding business in California and they don't want this woke politics and things like that. And I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, when he said that, I was like, hmm. The the cloud seeding. uh, I mean, did you know that we used this in Vietnam to flood enemy trails as uh, enemy, as warfare? Yeah. So this is not a new technology, but yes, it, it, it can be used. It can go wrong. You can see. Go ahead, Philip. Well, it just this is this is a process that's been kind of balanced on this planet over the course of millions and millions of years, like hundreds of millions of years. And you're going to start messing with that balance. Like, right. I, yeah. That's like absolute hubris, in my opinion. Like that's yes. that's one of those things I don't I don't like when science gets involved in like, no, let's not let's not poke that bear. Yeah. Please. But they are poking the bear, so I will put the link in if I didn't already. And yeah, um, <laughs> it's no, but it didn't just happen in 2016 and 2024 in Dubai now, 2016 Tasmania. It's been happening over and over and over again, repeated flooding. And only um, with a frequency that every year I have said, it's only going to get worse. And this uh, bad vibes from Dubai, flood coverage. Here we got, I don't know, is she Gen Z? Talking about how, yeah, this flooding, man. We've got to push those resiliency plans that they have to anyone else. This morning, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the flooding in Dubai, and the major point I'm seeing across headlines is the airports. And we know how many people don't get past headlines, which is why they're so important. And in multiple articles, it takes a little bit of scrolling to find that at least 19 people died from this storm system. I think what feels icky and wrong about it is that when we center stories like this around airports and tourism, and not the lives lost, or the fact that their city's infrastructure was not prepared for this, and your cities probably wouldn't be either, it will so easily desensitize us and make us think it can't happen to us. Multiple times I even had to scroll to the very end of the article just to see the first mention of climate change. And we've been dealing with stuff like this, like with the ongoing genocide in Gaza. This is not new news, it's just today's example. You need to know that when stuff like this happens, it happens fast, it's devastating, and it can happen to a lot of different cities. You need to know that so you can keep pushing your city for climate resilient infrastructure and the implementation of more climate solutions. Does- How sad, how sad. How sad. And she probably thinks that she's well informed and smart and she's, it's all a lie. She's destroying her own self by believing that lie. I'm gonna play some of Jane Tandy's video right now. I'm in California. You wouldn't know it. (laughs) So take a look at what you see at nighttime. 
flying around indoors. You won't be able to see it just looking. You have to film it. Oh, yeah, let's see what we can see flying around. See? All right. The stuff is inside as well. Even if it's clear, they're everywhere. Who would pay any attention to a few little things flying around? They don't even see it. I see them. Look at that. Pretty impossible not to notice. That's not dust falling. Because it's not falling, it's going up. <laughs> Unbelievable. Awareness, awareness, awareness is key to everything. And I am very aware of what these things are. And what do they have people doing now? Waxing their nose hairs. All those little hairs that are supposed to filter and prevent little particulates like this getting into your lungs. But they have people waxing their nose to get all the hair. <laughs> you can see these things. That's smart dust. Nanobots. They can be programmed. Okay, this next clip has more flying around in it, so try if you can not to pay attention to the dogs playing or the messy casita. But I hadn't been in very long and I had not straightened it. I hadn't fixed it up yet. So try to only focus on what you see flying around because there's more flying around in this clip than there was in the first one. Now, to quickly end, to quickly end this, those things that are seen in the video. <laughs> That's what it's like with these two. I always like to have a little bit of uh, craziness and humor in my videos, so I'll leave this in. <laughs> I'm just trying to finish this up with when I said in there when we got her. This is a little distracting. Mm -hmm. When they put us in lock... 
in lockdown the second time. When they put us in lockdown the second time, it's not quarantine. Quarantine's for sick people. We weren't sick. Anyway, that's when I decided I was going to go ahead and get a Belgian Malinois. I was going to have the time for training and housebreaking, doing the whole thing. She ended up being a dog that liked to sleep outside. I didn't like that. There are more of those things flying around outside than inside, I think. She was sleeping outside for approximately six months in all of that. And I was very concerned about it because we know what it is. So I was very concerned about her sleeping outside. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm only going to say I got her November of 2020. She was born in September. So I got her when she was eight weeks old. After those few months of her sleeping outside, she began sleeping inside. Thank goodness. But my concern of her being outside I will only say she's no longer with us. She turned three last September. Her birthday was my birthday. So she turned three in September and she lasted, I realized in November, she had a growth and five weeks later, she was gone. Whatever she had that got her, the growth that was on her left side near her kidney got into her lungs and her entire, her entire chest cavity was infested with cancer and whatever caused that cancer. Just take that for what you will. So this girl She's just a baby. She's my new one. All right, so I'm going to post the link. You can watch the end of it. And I know that a lot of people have asked about Jane Tandy. So click on the link and you can subscribe. But I see some, I had to go outside for a second, so I don't, um, I saw some comments that I may have misunderstood, I don't know, but some people think that it was just dust from the dogs playing and possibly um, dust is literally everywhere, but we've got an awful lot of dust now and it is remarkable. Um, Nanoparticles are too small to be seen by the naked eye for sure. But you can see, you can go outside and see a tremendous amount of all of what has been falling from the spraying and that we're breathing up. And yes, I posted many videos on smart dust and they're probably still on a playlist. Never lose truth. Not Never Lose Truth 5. Never Lose Truth. Um, so, but it was nice to see Jane. For sure. Officials pull out five barges trapped by Io, Ohio, Io, Ohio River Dam after 26 break loose. Uh, Pennsylvania authorities removed five barges that were trapped at a dam downriver from Pittsburgh on Tuesday. Ah. 
container um, ships. Get, I mean, it doesn't seem like anything is really working anymore. Right? Right. And they're taking down Hawaii Stairway to Heaven. It's set to be demolished soon. It apparently was a big tourist attraction, but a controversial attraction, it's being demolished. Well, uh, apparently uh, the Navy built it and there's 600 stair modules that will be removed. Um, the stairs have been slated for demolition since 2021. This was a decision when we came into office that was long overdue. Over the course of many months, in meeting with the people involved and the discovery that we put into it, I can promise you that this was not a capricious decision. This decision that was made was predicated upon our respect for the people who live in and around the entrance to the stairs and our respect for both the future and the past history of the culture of the community. The stairs built by the U.S. Navy in the 1940s have been officially closed since 1987, but that hasn't stopped hikers from climbing on them, often wandering through people's private property to access them for some of the island's best views. I read the reason, goes in one ear, out the other, they're closing an awful lot of parks. They're closing an awful lot and taking down and demolishing an awful lot of what the public, what the public likes. And that I don't think is very fair. All right, so one more window. Omens for the NASDAQ has technical signal proliferates technical cell signal for the NASDAQ has hit levels not seen since the tech bubble. Oh, okay. Well, it should be taken in context of a still supportive economic backdrop. Okay, this is when I just, I can't. There's no supportive economic backdrop. None. In fact, the IMF, uh, International Monetary Fund, came out and I thought it was posted to include in my live last night, but the International Monetary Fund said, there's a big risk for the United States. Their debt is really... It's a bubble and it's going to burst. So, yeah, with buoyant excess liquidity and low near-term recession risk, we're in recession. Okay. I don't know whether or not the guy that wrote this article, Simon White Bloomberg. Okay, well. A hardened mainstream media <coughs> operative and he's writing lies. The first that sentence is not a lie, though. And look, I'm going to go through some layoffs. Uh, not the percentage, you know, like 1% of workforce. EV, Ravian, that could be a lot of people. So, But here, uh, Wex Office, West Fargo, North Dakota, 100, greater than 100 layoffs. Fuji Film, 33 layoffs. Uh, 28 West Seneca School Board, New York. So many people are getting laid off from schools all over our country. 400 Sikorsky U.S. locations. Toshiba, 5,000 Japan. I just heard that Japan had an earthquake. Is this true? With fatalities? Okay. 580 
employees from Take Two Interaction Interactive. Uh, Meow Wolf, 165. Consulting Firm, 148. Morgan Stanley, Asia, 50. Um, Marvel, 15. BP EV Charging Business, 100. Reduces global ambitions because people don't want to buy electric vehicles. They're too costly. 206 layoffs, UPS, begin at New Stanton. Layoffs at L.L. Bean. 60, Mustang, bio. I'll post the link to Daily Job Cuts. I said bookmark it. I recommend bookmarking because you'll really see, and it's not an exhaustive list, but you will see that our economy is tanked. Tanked. Now we're just waiting for the, the realization, the official announcement of the tank. And then a whole lot of layoffs will come. I hope you're prepared. 14 stores across North Carolina fined for overcharging. And look at the stores that are overcharging. Okay, Michael's in Burlington. But family dollar, family dollar, family dollar. This is all in the Forsyth County. Hartford County, family dollar, another family dollar. Mecklenburg County, family dollar, another family dollar, another family dollar, another family dollar. Stanley County, another family dollar. Wake County, Sheets, I don't know what Sheets is. Wilkes County, Dollar General. And Union County, family dollar. I went to a family dollar in the other place I lived in Arizona. And I was shocked at how expensive it was. Aren't these supposed to be catering to the low prices? Tech layoffs, remote work, push office vacancies to 19.6%, highest since 1979. Wow. Commercial real estate is tanking because nobody's going to work. What does that mean? Is it just those offices? No, it's all of the business around the offices that also go down. More layoffs. And I'm going to post the link to uh, this tweet. This is Danielle... DiMartino Booth, layoffs will surge only a matter of time before implosion. Let me, let me get it and I'll post a link to YouTube. I've never seen a, a, a layoff cycle be over after just a few months. By the Sorry to say, but it is coming. Los Angeles Mayor Bass pleads for wealthy to help buy housing for the homeless. It's an unprecedented partnership. Yeah, LA has a struggle to house over 40,000 homeless people. The crisis on our streets is nothing less than a disaster. Don't we know it? Yes, I'm sure the wealthy care about the homeless. The mayor says it's possible that the number of homeless people will continue to increase. You don't say, mayor. Is that your prediction? Based on how fabulous our economy is? Wow, you're smart. In part because of evictions and the end of COVID-19 aid for low-income Households. Okay, just want to remind everybody that for some reason, hmm, California can't account for 
billion dollars. They can't account for 2.5 billion that was meant to help the homeless. So someone stole that money and now you're asking the wealthy to help the homeless. Why don't you ask Sacramento to do some, you know, shopping around. Look for the 2.5 billion that went missing. Unhoused residents built home on side of Southern California freeway, complete with a stone wall, a walkway, a front door, electric powered lighting, and even a hammock for relaxing. It all stands out. Well, good. That person has skills. Good. It'll be taken down, no doubt. It'll be taken down. I will link below to the great taking a commentary by Ivor Cummins. So, yeah, to get a an idea of, you know, the big picture and what really is happening, I think the great taking, and I want to thank my subscriber for sending it along. Um, I'll just play a few, uh, a few minutes of it. And today I'm going to talk about financial assets and I'm going to share The Great Taking, which is a book uh, I think everyone should read. It's from David Rogers Webb and thegreattaking.com. It's free and there's also a documentary he made. Uh, and I'm going to try and parse it out and compress it. It's a big story. Uh, and I'm going to put a few other little things in there as well for your entertainment. So basically, this graph I made a few weeks ago was very popular and it got me on Dr. Drew a few days ago and, and various other platforms. So people seem to like it and I made a PDF version you can download and stick in the fridge. And it's just a root cause diagram which we use in engineering, a very simplified version of bubbles and arrows to just show how everything connects together. We use it to help with senior management in a complex problem uh, because they're not always the smartest. So globalist, quote, utopia, what the Rockefellers, the WEF, the Club of Rome, and I can go on all day, what all these elites have put together over 70 years and what they desire. And my daughter actually said it best, I think. Uh, she said, oh, and this is the summer of 2020. As I was talking to her about this stuff, she said, they want an ant farm, don't they? And I said, that's exactly what they want. So they don't want to depopulate and kill all the ants. They just want a nice ant farm like China. And they're all looking with jealous eyes to China over the last 50 years. So that's essentially it at its simplest. So that's their utopia. And basically, all these disparate things that people see going on, often the person in the street is kind of thinking, well, I know everything's gone crazy, but how can it all connect together? So this helps, perhaps. The COVID-19 program, for that's what it was, uh, gender and all the trans nonsense, where did that come from? <laughs> climate, <laughs> climate and CO2, right? Surely that's a different thing. Financial and central bank digital currencies, uh, mass migration, well, that's unto itself, surely. Uh, Anti-meat propaganda and the war on farmers, you'll all have seen. Uh, education and the children. So I'll just go through quickly if I can. So mass formation was used, techniques to get lockstep authoritarianism. And another thing that was aimed for with this whole program was weakening society. And you're going to see this red is to China over the last 50 years. So that's essentially it at its simplest. So that's their utopia. And basically, all these disparate things that people see going on, often the person in the street is kind of thinking, well, I know everything's gone crazy, but how can it all connect together? So this helps, perhaps. The COVID-19 program, for that's what it was. 
I didn't do anything. It just skipped back. Sorry. So let's start right here. Payment and CO2, right? Surely that's a different thing. Financial and central bank digital currencies, uh, mass migration, well, that's unto itself, surely. Uh, Anti-meat propaganda and the war for, and creation of a biosecurity state. So the WHO was given enormous power through COVID and that was a huge benefit towards their goals and delivers to the goals. Partner profiteering, sometimes missed, not just Big Pharma, right? The funders of the WEF are all the corporations. Way more than Big Pharma were wetting their beak during COVID, right? Think of it like mafia. You allow the other families to wet their beaks, you know, keep everyone together. So you had mask manufacturers, Amazon, big box stores, small businesses shut down, all the big guys could make an absolute fortune. I could go on and on. So that's the beak wetting, and it's very, very useful. It enhances the funding source to the World Economic Forum and to the Agenda 2030 goals, because all the corporates are delighted and it bolsters those alliances with all the corporates. The corporates know their bottom line is shooting up and therefore they like it. They like what's going on, even if they're not too sure about some of the stuff. And it's all self-reinforcing towards the globalist utopia. Censorship apparatus, they made censorship great again in 2020. Mm -hmm. Hadn't seen censorship really in a century in the West. But they managed to pull it off and get people to kind of accept it because we're saving granny and all this stuff, right? Nonsense. Um, that weakens society like nothing else, of course. If you shut vo down voices, it's a major problem. And uh, great words by Richard, they're exactly right. Uh, you know, we need to counter it in a whack-a-mole way. So the gender and trans, that's kind of different. Well, no, it erodes fundamental truths. So we have up and down, black and white, male and female. They've actually gone after one of the big ones. And when you erode fundamental truths in society and you use mass formation in the media, it weakens society. It's divisive, it confuses people, and people kind of keep their mouth shut. Uh, so that's the reason for all of this stuff. And it's funded by major corporate uh, moneyed interests. And the Pritzker family, billionaires in America, have set up foundations to drive this nonsense and of course it delivers the goals climate and i'll post the link <clears throat> very good talk very good to circulate to those who have difficulty connecting the dots african asylum seeker in italy very angry, so he sets fire to a petrol station. Eh, non ci credo, pazzesco! Major protest in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania against our fabulous president. A major protest is underway outside U.S. Steel building for Biden's campaign stop visit. This was pretty big. <laughs>
What does this say? Bad badonomics? Can anyone read that? I can't. I think it says badonomics. Okay, Missouri files injunction to block Biden's illegal student loan plan while lawsuit plays out. Plan A, it was the Supreme Court that said, mm, you can't do that. So plan B is not very different. I mean, it is illegal. <laughs> I just... Ooh, Plan B, which was implemented shortly after previous attempt, Plan A, was deemed illegal by the Supreme Court. So we're going to do Plan B and just eliminate the student loan for, I think, 227000 All right, we're, we're just willy-nilly, we're just going to, we're going to do this. And this isn't how our government's supposed to be operating. The dictator in the White House doesn't get to decide. Well, this is what I want to do. Certainly not during an election year. Wow. Okay. You're not going to be speaker much longer. I would, you know... Thomas Massey, um, senator from Kentucky, I mean, uh, representative, might be the only person that I actually have respect for in Congress. So it was Thomas Massey saying to Johnson, Speaker of the House, you're not going to be speaker much longer. There's a whole lot of deals going on behind closed doors. That's not the way Congress operates. But a lot of this has to do, uh, Massey criticized Johnson for backing aid packages for Ukraine and Israel, kick the can spending bills, and the extension of warrantless NSA spying via the Pfizer Act while failing to bolster border security. And Johnson went down to the border. Oh, and mainstream media, they, media, they followed him down to the border. And he got a lot of press when he was down at the border and he has not done anything since. Johnson and Trump. Trump came out just a couple of days ago. Johnson's doing a good job. Johnson's doing a good job. Um, actually, broadening for the NSA their surveillance on American citizens. And here, we've got nut jobs. We have nut jobs. Mainstream media, listen to Joy Reid. In prison, but for me, there is something wonderfully poetic about the fact that despite the fact that even if convicted, he's not gonna go to prison, the first person to actually criminally prosecute Donald Trump is a black Harvard grad, the very kind of person that his former staff, the people who worked for him, Stephen Miller, et cetera, want to never be at Harvard uh, law school, but he was, and he came out and graduated. And he's prosecuting you, Donald, and a black woman is doing that same exact thing in Georgia, and a black woman forced you to pay a hundred and seventy-five million dollar fine that's out now, also in question because the people who put it up that might not be legit. Donald Trump is being held to account by the very multicultural, multiracial democracy that he's trying to dismantle. And for me, there's something poetic and actually wonderful about that. It mm. says something good about our country that we're still capable of having that happen. Go DEI. My DEIs are bringing it home on. Mm. 
Is something wrong with that little broadcast there? Do you think something's wrong with that broadcast there? She's happy that it's a black woman taking down a white man that she hates. Why inject that into this lawsuit? Because it causes division and they love the division. But it really makes me sick. This woman lies continually on her broadcast. She's paid very handsomely to do it, lives a great life. <laughs> she has no integrity, no dignity, no scruples, no moral character. And she's propped up. Okay. Okay, okay. Outrage as high school student is suspended just for using the term illegal alien in class discussions. North Carolina. This shouldn't be highlighted all over. In North Carolina. Why is this highlighted? It shouldn't be. Okay. A 16 year old. North Carolina high school student says he was suspended just for saying illegal alien while discussing a word, word meaning in English class, possibly ruining his chances of landing a college sports scholarship. Kristen McGee, Central Davidson High School student in Lexington, received a three-day suspension last week. His mother, Leah, said his teacher had given an assignment that used the word alien. And Kristen asked, like space aliens or illegal aliens without green cards? Another student reportedly took offense and threatened to fight Kristen. So the teacher took the matter to the assistant principal Look at this. Nice picture. Eventually, his words were determined to be offensive and disrespectful to Hispanic classmates, so he was suspended. Now, does every parent that has a child that goes to that school need to rush the principal and demand that that student not be suspended? Absolutely. Will we see that? I hope so. There was nothing wrong with what he did at all. Oh, but somebody else was offended. Do you see how bad things are now in our country? They're really bad. And children are suffering from it. Can't say certain words. They can't discuss it in class. They can't ask the offended student, well, why are you offended? You know, I failed to read some of his article. He was an NP a senior NPR editor who has come out as essentially a whistleblower um, talking about the hard left, which NPR is. It is a propaganda machine uh, that tolerates no dissent. He's absolutely right. And he, he was at NPR for 25 years, and he just recently wrote an article. This is what he said. A Peabody Award-winning senior editor at NPR. 
with declining rating, ratings, sorry levels of trust, and an audience that has become less diverse over time, the trajectory for NPR is not promising. Two paths seem clear. We can keep doing what we're doing, hoping it will all work out, or we could start over with the basic building blocks of journalism. How about it? We could face up to where we've gone wrong. News organizations don't go in for that kind of reckoning, but there is a good reason for NPR to be the first. We're the ones with the word public in our name, Well, this was in an article. New NPR CEO, who apparently, based on the article of Yuri Berliner, um, who essentially exposed her as just a flaming, liberal, woke, well, I'm going to use my words, nut job. CEO. She gave a TED Talk asserting truth is a distraction. Says it's getting in the way of getting things done. Oh, wow. The brilliance. But the hard things, the places where we are prone to disagreement, say politics and religion. Well, as it turns out, not only does Wikipedia's model work there, it actually works really well. Because in our normal lives, these contentious conversations tend to erupt over disagreement about what the truth actually is. But the people who write these articles, they're not focused on the truth. They're focused on something else, which is the best of what we can know right now. And after seven years of working with these brilliant folks, I've come to believe that they are onto something, that perhaps, for our most tricky disagreements, seeking the truth and seeking to convince others of the truth might not be the right place to start. In fact, our reverence for the truth might be a distraction that's getting in the way of finding common ground and getting things done. Now, that is not to say that the truth doesn't exist nor is it to say that the truth isn't important. Clearly, the search for the truth has led us to do great things, to learn great things. But I think if I were to really ask you to think about this, one of the things that we could all acknowledge is that part of the reason we have such glorious chronicles to the human experience in all forms of culture is because we acknowledge there are many different truths. And so in the spirit of that, I'm certain that the truth exists for you and probably for the person sitting next to you. Truth is not subjective. Truth is truth. And everybody should be inspiring people to seek out the truth. Truth is not, hey, you have a truth and then you have a truth. No, no. And what we need to be doing is, with every interaction that we have or, you know, looking up things and everything, just trying to get to the truth of the matter. And it's hard. But she is telling everybody, you don't have to do that. Don't worry about that. I know, I'm the CEO of NPR. I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. Hezbollah drone slam into northern Israel community center, 18 wounded, and I am wanting my Israeli subscriber to contact me, who I think is in northern Israel, and just leave a quick I'm okay email. Yeah. 
the war goes on. I wish things were getting better. I may play this whole thing out. Now, Google employees have staged sit-ins to protest against the tech giant's business with the Israeli government. Protesters rallied in the company's offices in New York and California. Google and rival tech firm Amazon reportedly signed a $1.2 billion contract with the Israeli government back in 2021. The Project Nimbus deal is said to provide cloud computing infrastructure and services to the Israeli government. Not only uh, is the lack of transparency concerning, but just the context uh, of which the contract is being taken place. And we know that the genocide in Gaza is one of the, or is the first AI powered genocide. So we find that big tech is at the forefront uh, of kind of like streamlining this genocide uh, against Palestinians. So let's bring in Ramesh Srinivasan. He's a professor at the UCLA Department of Information Studies. He joins us live from Los Angeles. Ramesh, good to have you with us. So tell us briefly, what exactly is Project Nimbus and why is the project so controversial that even Google employees, as we just saw there, uh, are now protesting about how it's being used with the Israelis as the war in Gaza continues? Yeah, so Project Nimbus is a, is, a, is a contract that Google and to a lesser extent Amazon Web Services signed with the Israeli government uh, for $1.2 billion back in 2021. And as, as um, the person who was interviewed in your story indicated, there's actually a, a shocking lack of transparency around exactly what this project covers outside of providing interoperable, comprehensive cloud computing, which is essentially systems of data storage, data management, and sharing data for the Israeli government, which uh, of course is likely to extend to the Israeli Defense Forces, so it's it's a project that reckon, it's it's a project that marks and 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 and, and sort of highlights uh, the direct connections that big technology companies in the United States have not only to the, with the so-called military-industrial complex, but to directly aiding and abetting um, the Israeli government at a very, very. Uh, a very difficult time. Yeah, uh, and that's an interesting point you make because the recent International Court of Justice ruling compelled Israel to prevent acts of genocide in Gaza. Could then big tech companies be held responsible if it's found that their AI software helped Israel to target Palestinian civilians in Gaza? I mean, could they be held uh, as complicit to genocide? Absolutely, because we know that these AI systems are actually... Um, have a number of false positives associated with them. That's There's reporting that came out just in the last couple of weeks on this. So the Israelis are actually using big tech, American big tech corporate AI software to predict targets and pro the probability that the target is where they think that, that the that they will, um, you know, engage in, in a sort of a violent act, right? So basically the way this is working is corporate American big tech is actually aligned with many of the Israeli military's actions in these particular ways. And the fact that AI systems are being used uh, indicates that there's a lack of regard um, by the Israeli state and the IDF, and obviously connected to this uh, big tech companies in the false positives, meaning that they know and everybody knows these AI systems will make mistakes, right? So that there will be wrongful deaths and wrongful assassinations as we've seen with so many civilian people yeah. in Gaza. They're basically complicit in such in the sense that they, they, they are signing contracts with uh, the state. Ramesh, so do we know then if, if Google and to a lesser extent Amazon are selling this kind of technology uh, to other countries or militaries? And once they sell it, do they have any control over how it's used? Right. I mean, that's that's very dependent on the specific agreements that any big tech company will have with another state. And and mind you, this is not merely an issue involving Google and Amazon. The company Palantir, uh, headed by Peter Thiel, who's a supporter of the former President Trump, um, is a company that's been using many of its military prediction. It's been using prediction software with other states. Um, Project Nimbus is at least, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's quite notable for its lack of transparency, right? Um, so we don't really know if 
you know, sort of equivalents of this are happening with this particular set of partnerships for all data interoperability, for all cloud computing for other foreign states. Okay. But certainly one can imagine that that is something that could happen or is happening. Uh, Ramesh, just a final thought to you. Are we now then in a world where big tech uh, is selling this kind of controversial AI technology to the highest bidder in a very unregulated market space that even governments are, are, are powerless to police? And if so, what needs to be done? Yeah, as you allude to, it's a much, much larger issue. Almost everything in our lives is turned into data. That data is being harvested by private corporations. It can be bought and sold. It was bought and sold in the case of examples like Cambridge Analytica. So we know that basically our data, these ways of of, of, mon of quantifying different aspects of our lives are being bought and sold and transacted and largely are being transacted uh, in relation to big tech platforms. We also know in the AI space, we're talking about a very limited set of actors. Some something of an oligopoly, both in the US and China, just a few actors that are using our data without compensating us potentially to for all sorts of aims, whether they're advertising oriented aims, or in this case, uh, pot pot potential surveillance assassination types of aims. So what really needs to be done is every single corporate driven technology must be regulated to ensure that it's audited, that there's disclosure, and that we are very clear about what data of ours is being used, by whom, and for what purposes, and the rights are returned to people accordingly. And there's plenty of ways for big tech companies to continue to be the wealthiest companies in the whole world and in the history of the world, uh, while still maintaining our rights over our own data because they're expressive okay. of our own lives as people. Ramesh Srinivasan, really good to get your thoughts and your analysis there, Ramesh. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Appreciate it. The AI being used in Israel to target individuals is called lavender, if you want to do any research on it. There's another AI being used to target infrastructure, structures, and that is called the gospel. You do realize that this AI is going to be controlling all of us in our own communities. The AI will be used to target those who are like us. Or should I say us? So, zero, you don't have to go that far. Come on. We all know the definition of the word China. Okay, I read that first comment of Matt's and it was perfectly fine and I understood it. So I don't know what you're doing here. What are you doing? Just maybe trying to cause some, some angst. We don't need it. We really don't need it. I'd say that, well, I'll speak for myself, but I'm probably speaking for a lot of people. They've had enough of angst and drama and silliness and we don't need it. We're very tired. I think a lot of us are very tired. I'm very tired. Zelensky angry that Israel prioritized, prioritized by West, says Ukraine running out of missiles to defend airspace. Ugh. Oh, what are we going to do? Russia's going to win. Oh, send more. Billions. Send those billions. Johnson, Speaker Johnson. It, but even, you know, reading these headlines, doesn't it? seem like Zelensky is just a child in his sandbox, pounding sand. We need more missiles. We need more missiles. And I see an immaturity in, in there's such immaturity in people who resort to violence. <laughs> but these warmongering crazies are well, we know the, the pathological malignant narcissists, the um, psychopaths, they just have never grown up. They're, they're truly infantile. Unfortunately, they carry a big stick. 
Chinese diplomats are quietly meeting with Hill staffers about TikTok. Quietly meeting? Oh, boy. What's the definition of Chinese? Come on, nobody's making any threats against you, Zero. Don't go there. Um, there it, it, this is, please. Please. They're quietly meeting with Hill staffers. Don't let the public know. Don't let the public know. Oh, that's all I have. Oh, please, Zero, stop it. Look. I, uh... What's happening in southeastern Ohio? Any of you in that area? What's happening in this area of Pennsylvania? Any of you know? Is L still in the chat? But I think, no, L lives more east. But is this coming towards more people or will they shoot it with a frequency to blow it out? Let's see. Magnitude 6.4 quake hits Shikoku, Japan. Tsunami warning. That was 10 hours ago. On Wednesday night, a magnitude 6.4 earthquake shook off the west coast of the Shikoku Island. Fortunately, no threat of tsunami was emerged, and initial reports show that there is no injury or damage to. The quake striking at approximately 11.14 p.m. local time reached a weak 6 intensity in parts of Kochi and Ehime prefectures. Its epicenter lay in the Bongo Channel, situated at a depth of 50 kilometers between the Kyushu and Shikoku Islands. Now, you may have heard that, but I can't hear a thing. So, for those who want to leave me comments and blast out my ears and everything, I can't hear it at all. So, I do have to raise the volume a little. On Wednesday night, a magnitude 6.4 earthquake shook off the west coast of the Shikoku Island. Fortunately, no threat of tsunami was emerged, and initial reports show that there is no injury or damage to. The quake striking at approximately 11.14 p.m. local time reached a weak 6 intensity in parts of Kochi and Ehime prefectures. Its epicenter lay in the Bongo Channel, situated at a depth of 50 kilometers between the Kyushu and Shikoku Islands. However, a tremor was felt across the broad area of western Japan, but no abnormalities were detected at the Shikoku Electric Power Plant or nuclear plant in Ehime Prefecture as reported by the local media. This event marks yet another significant earthquake in Japan within the last four months. 
Just days ago, a magnitude 6 earthquake had struck off the east coast of Honshu, Japan, although no tsunami warning was issued and minimal damage was reported. However, on 1st of January 2024, a catastrophic 7.6 magnitude earthquake had rocked the Noto Peninsula of Ishikawa Prefecture, causing extensive destruction and claiming 244 lives with numerous injuries across six prefectures. Fortunately, this recent earthquake appears to have resulted in no such devastation. Nonetheless, the That was of a bigger magnitude. Oh boy. Nine hours ago. A magnitude 6 for earthquake measuring a weak 6 on Japan's seismic intensity scale struck off the west coast of Shikoku Island on Wednesday night. There was no threat of a tsunami and no initial reports of injuries or damage from the quake which struck at 11.14 p.m. I can't imagine living in Japan since Fukushima and the tsunami when you're there feeling an earthquake. That must trigger an awful lot of holy shit for sure. Oh my god. No, I, I, I think I'm on overload with stress. Thanks, Deacon. Zero, don't do this. There's no point. All right. I don't have anything else. To be honest, I've had a very difficult time these days. Very difficult time doing anything, concentrating. So. I apologize. You haven't seen Al. Okay. I do apologize and um, you let me know if you guys want to chat a little bit longer. I can just play. I'll pull up one of my videos and just play it from my Never Lose Truth playlist. We have to chat and I might cry. Directed energy weapons for sure. I'm 
looking for a plain truth. I wish he was still around. It's not just the general public who, who... This is 14 minutes and 31 seconds, and I'm just going to play it out. It was a very good interview, and I posted it with... Um, videos that I've taken of the sky, but watch the pulses the directed energy weapons from the electromagnetic frequencies affecting every cell in all life, but the pulses are extremely dangerous. We don't really understand it. Um, the scientists who have produced it have absolutely no idea of the mathematics of the waveform that it's going to produce or that it is producing. Um, we know that it is in the, generally, it's in the gigahertz range. Now, I'll explain that. <clears throat> but um, what it's, what it's, uh, the, the problems are, is that first, there are, like, the, like its predecessors, there are no safety checks at all carried out on 5G. There are no safety tests at all carried out on anything to do with 5G. It is known that the gigahertz range, in other words, the waveform, the, the waves that come out, it is known that they are in the same frequency as some of our cellular processes in our bodies, some of our cells. It is known they can interfere with the cellular processes of the body, um, <clears throat> there are several different waveforms for 5G. It isn't just one wave. Already, I do know that 40 leading groups or 40 leading groups of scientists um, in 40 countries, uh, leading scientists in 40 countries, have warned that the waveforms from 5G. Uh, can be particularly harmful, not just to humans, but to all living species. And I can tell you as a military man that one of the top waveforms for 5G <laughs> is incredibly close. And in terms of electronic waveforms, there really isn't much difference from the new microwave weapon called Active Denial that is now in use for crowd control to subdue and bring bring down crowds and that is known or reputed uh, to cause visual disturbances certainly neurological disturbances um, heart disturbances all, all sorts of things now that is the, the the new active denial which can be also released from aircraft or beamed from aircraft uh, that is incredibly close to one of the frequencies on 5G. And as I said, there are no, the waveform is so mathematically complex that nobody can really tell you how it's going to react other than it makes a damn good weapon. Uh, and we are now producing this and handing it to toddlers. And you said to me, or, or, I'll never forget it, you said, Richie, as it stands, you said, low level wireless radio frequency that's low level wireless radio frequency this is back now six seven years ago um when we're exposed to that it can disrupt cell metabolism it can reduce melatonin um which of course controls your sleeping and your waking cycles and, it'll, and your immune system and your immune and, system and, and, and your immune system yeah. and you said it'll it'll disrupt brain glucose metabolism and it'll mess around with the blood-brain barrier that was low level wireless radio frequency and you were oh, proven yeah, to be yeah. right 
So this is something different entirely, Barry. For the lay person, what's it like? Is it like turning 4G up to, you know, from, from, from 7 up to 1,000 on the, on the dial, on the radio? What is it? Um, <clears throat> I suppose you, 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 the simple answer, of course, is yes and no. Um, each, each particular frequency uh, can affect diff- different parts of the body. You, you have, um, in an adult body, you have around 4,500 biological structures. And uh, every part of your body, every single part of your body is in communication with every other part. Every single cell in your body produces its own electric and magnetic field. Um, And they all, it's like a constant chatter that goes on in your body all the time. But they all have their own different resonant cyclotronic and circadian frequencies. Now, when I was talking to spies and and studying this during the Cold War, um, it it was realized that different frequencies could cause different things to happen in the body. There's a frequency that can cause the bowel to collapse, the eyes to go funny, the heart to collapse, and so on. Uh, And there are four and a half thousand different structures in the body that can be known to be affected. So as you run through the the 2G, 3G, 4G, then you can affect different ones. The, when, when I was talking to spies and my list, the list that I made, uh, I suppose I had a list, an active list of uh, networks then that, that used uh, between 40 and 60 different frequencies that could cause up to around 100 neurological and physiological conditions. The latest list that I have, I've seen one of 600. The latest list I've seen or heard of is now 750 uh, different frequencies that can cause neurological, physiological harm. But it isn't 750 where you get this one or this one or this one. Um, Mathematically, it is 750 factorial, which means you can get the effects of one multiplied by two, multiplied by three, up to 750. Now, 5G is going to encompass a lot of what all of the other Gs have and introduce its own as well. And this is why the top scientists in 40 countries have actually signed a petition saying, you know, you, you cannot do this. Uh, but like every all of the other Gs, um, the industry and the government scientists are choosing to ignore the entire scientific body throughout the world uh, and just plod on regardless because um, they are actually above the law. You know, they can buy the law. The industry, I had a, a symposium here not too many months ago with there were 11 professors and research doctors here uh, for four days <coughs> discussing all of this and turning it into a DVD. Um, and they were just absolutely horrified that nobody is being listened to. And the producer of this, he said, well, I've researched this industry and it is now estimated at 17 trillion dollars. 17 trillion dollars. Uh, 17 trillion. And when you have that much money, uh, you know, you, you can buy governments, you can buy countries, uh, and it's not, it's not difficult to buy scientists. It really isn't. Uh, that will do an experiment which is legitimate but not accurate, and it will cause confusion. And this is what they're doing, and they're going to get away with it <coughs> um, because they are above the law. Can I ask and you this, Barry? Know... Sorry, Go let, let me ask you this. Will we, again, going back to when we first began talking, we talked about the effects of 
um, radiation on the smallest creatures in the world. Well, not the smallest creatures, but, you know, the smallest creatures that we come into contact with every day, birds, of course, and bees and, and insects. Yeah. Are we going to see, you know, because we talked about how back in the early 2000s, we saw incidences of birds falling out of the sky, birds abandoning, abandoning their nests, all sorts of issues that we saw back then. Are these issues, are we going to see more of this in the next two to well, three to four get, years? Yes, it's, it's going to get worse. Um, in my paper, which I wrote uh, three years ago now, <clears throat> um, uh, Wi-Fi thalidomide in the making, um, I predicted for the human race, that and, and David Icke picked this up and published it. Um, I predicted. Well, I didn't predict. I proved uh, using government figures, World Health Organization figures, secret figures. I proved that in just three generations, sixty years of human life, only of the exposed populations, only one in eight children after three generations could be born healthy. Now, that has been, people picked that up and ran with experiments, which I'm very pleased of. And it, I, oddly enough, I read just a few days ago um, that experiments show that entire species of animals, entire species can be extinct in five generations. Now, that would match my prediction because if you've got only one in eight, uh, roughly after three, you, you then don't have enough population of anything to sustain uh, a, a workable population. So it, it's been published, I read it just a few days ago, that they are now showing that after five generations for some animals, they could become extinct, except, and this is interesting, except bacteria and viruses, they seem to proliferate and grow and become more deadly in microwaves. So while it's and destroying, the while it's, while it's destroying um, the biological makeup of <laughs> creatures, of, of, of mammals, of, of yeah. you know, marsupials, of human beings, it actually increases the potency of viruses and some bacteria. That's extraordinary. Oh, yeah, it, and it, it was uh, because this came up in our conversation. Yeah. Uh, and I can tell you, he wouldn't mind me, he's published it. Um, it, it was Professor Moskala, uh, who is the senior professor of Vienna University. Um, I, I mentioned this, and he said, oh, yes, and he, and he came out with, with the, pr the proteins on, on the bacterium and that. Um, but it, it's known, and it is published, that bacterium, when they're exposed to microwaves, they... Um, can reproduce so rapidly that they have a defensive mechanism. Well, of course, they are the oldest living beings on the planet. They've, they've developed a defensive mechanism, and they reproduce more rapidly, and they become um, immune to antibiotics. They, they sort of turn into sort of a super bacterium. There's a couple of quotes I want to I, I wanna just read out here from... Um, learned men and women. This is Olga Sheehan. She's a former employee of the World Health Organization and she wrote a book called No Safe Place. Uh, you might be aware of Olga, Barry. Olga oh, says, yeah. you know yeah, Olga, yeah. Olga says, the plans to beam highly penetrative 5G millowave radiation at us from space must surely be one of the greatest follies ever conceived of by mankind there will be nowhere safe to live and as well as not hearing Barry Trower on BBC television or radio we don't hear people like Olga Sheehan that's you know everybody in the world should hear that whether they want to dismiss it out of hand or whether they want to investigate it the greatest follies ever conceived of by mankind there will be nowhere safe to live Barry <laughs> With, with these microwaves, and it is known, um, th th there are 20, 30,000 research papers. With microwaves, we do know that every living thing on the planet, except 
bacterium and virus. Every living thing, trees, everything, plants, every single thing, birds, fish, um, everything is affected by microwaves. Now, with, with us, when they're beaming these down from satellites, <coughs> um, you have nowhere to go. Nowhere. You have absolutely nowhere to go. But you do have a choice uh, at the moment not to be vaccinated. You have a choice not to eat certain foods. You, you, there is a, a little choice that you can have. Um, it may be living away from the general population, which some people would quite like, but you, you have a choice not to do those. There is no choice with microwaves. Hi, everyone. It is February 1, 2019, one month into 2019. So that's another video. And, wow, well, I brought it to 6.43. Yeah, um, no safe, no escape, not in what they are doing. And I did want to mention about that AI, that guy that mentioned planeteer. Trump and, oh God, what was his name? The founder of planeteer. Can't remember his name. Close buddies. Trump knows exactly what he's doing. And it's unfortunate that an awful lot of people clearly either don't want to do anything and want to just, I'm going to vote for Trump, he's going to fix everything. The only people who can fix anything, we the people. We the people. So, um, and talk about, I had heart palpitations last night. Um, and what I've been experiencing recently is a more frequent disturbance of my vision every day. You know, the jagged lights. This I haven't had a bad vertigo episode maybe since Georgia, but the dizziness is not fun. Um, thanks, Elm. Thank you. But what I've been noticing also, especially here, there's something going on that is sucking moisture out of the environment. So I'll put out water um, that they have bowls here and you put out the water for the birds and the squirrels and the ground squirrels are incredibly cute. Um, and I, much to my surprise, not that I have seen, my cats haven't gotten any. Um, but that's what I've seen. The, uh, so you fill up the bowl with water. I also notice it in the cat, the water for the cat water. I can, I can barely talk. I'll fill it up. And I know that it's not the cats drinking all of that whole bowl, but I'll wake up in the morning and I am, there's just a little bit left. The same thing is happening with filling up the bowls of water outside. The cat food, there are two, well, three um, ferals, really, because they're scared of people. And But food, she puts out food for them. And within, I'd say, about an hour, you can tell that moisture has been lifted from the wet food and it looks absolutely repulsive. I have never seen anything like this. 
So if anybody else is experiencing aluminum dehydrates and people are, the elderly especially, are dying from dehydration, we are 70% water. I also, since I've been to Arizona, um, I have to keep water right by the bed because I will wake up and it feels like I have paste in my mouth. My, I, I, my mouth is so dry that I've never experienced anything like it. And it happens all the time. Now, I drink a tremendous amount of water throughout the day. This should not be happening, but it is happening. So any of you, oh yeah, the, the eyes that feel dry all the time, absolutely. Um, no, longer than that, Elizabeth, not five years. Well, at least not for us. So, in the last few minutes that we have, if anybody else is experiencing any of that, vertigo is scary. It is not fun. And the bad vertigo episodes that I've had leaves me feeling nauseous. Ow, ow, this is a new thing. It's usually the left ear that begins to feel like, God, I can't even describe it, but it's a weird sensation, almost like it's getting numb with a vibrating sensation. Well, we do know that they are, and they can, literally lift moisture from the rivers, from the ponds, from the ocean, from a bowl of water outside. And your cat bowls have been doing the same thing. Your cat comes in wanting water. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if they're targeting um, specific areas of the brain when it hits the left ear pretty consistently. I have felt it, I think, on my right ear, but you know, the high-pitched tones will either be left or right, but this weird sensation that's like, um, is left. The left ear. It's sad, Matt, to hear that you've moved to the mountains in Northern California and you're still getting the ear ringing.
Yeah, I know, Michael. The change of modulations can definitely be detected. I've tried a lot of things and nothing has worked. Nothing has worked. Now, there are people that it's worked for them, okay. I think a lot of people will get the placebo effect when they try different shielding or whatever. Um, if you listen to Barry Trower, you know, he's an expert in microwaves and he knows. Why do you think they the, the whole push to get lead, lead paint removed. Lead is what blocks the frequencies. Lead. Why do you think they, you know, the x-ray uh, vest that they put on you, and then when they take the x-ray, the employees walk out of the room, um... That x-ray vest is lead. So, why do you think lead paint is so unbelievably expensive? You would think that it would be really inexpensive because people aren't buying it, right? You just want to deplete you know, your inventory and so thank you all for showing up. The dog is always shaking his head. The reason why I say that they may be experiencing a placebo effect is because throughout the years, I've spoken to a lot of subscribers. They say they used this and they felt so much better and then two weeks later, they're back at researching something else because it stopped working for them. Shungite is the same thing. You notice no benefit. This environment is a very difficult environment to escape. And when they have full out AI, there will be no escape. There's no escape now, but that's what we're heading into. All right, guys, live honestly, speak honestly. Establish yourself as a trustworthy human being. Help one another. Help those in your community who are hurting, your family, your friends, community members, neighbors. Check on the elderly in your community. Remember to pick up some food for your local food pantry when you're shopping. You know, we can all do that. And um, food for the animal shelters. If you can foster an animal, animal shelters are so overwhelmed now. We've got to do what we can do. And a whole lot of us are really now suffering physically. But we still need to do what we can do. So... I appreciate you all. Stay safe and good night and good luck. Ciao, guys.